Our final honoree this evening is Deepa Mehta. She is a fearless storyteller, a director, and filmmaker whose honest portrayals of people in conflict with themselves, their families, communities, and society have earned her an, Ac an Academy Award nomination, pardon me, and numerous other awards and nominations. She chose Canada as her home and chose to tell stories with universal truths. She's not afraid to tackle what many consider taboo issues, gender-based violence, human rights, religion, politics, and statehood. There have been death threats. She's been forced to shut down productions and relocate because of opposition to the themes of her films and the way in which her characters are portrayed. Molotov cocktails were even thrown during the screening of Fire, the first film in her Elemental trilogy, which dealt with two sister-in-laws who fell in love. At the time, homosexuality was banned in India. The third film of her Elements trilogy, Water, deals with oppression of women, human rights, sexuality, and religion. Very light stuff. Extremists burned Defa, Deepa rather, in effigy. Her reaction, her comment, what was my effigy wearing? <laughs> A breaker of glass ceilings, Deepa has never felt restricted by her gender despite being in a rarefied space. There are few women directors, few directors of color, and even fewer as successful as Deepa. She is imbued with tremendous confidence and a curiosity about everyone involved in the stories of life. She is alert to the huge costs of social and political divisions. Deepa grew up in and around the cinema as her father was a film distributor in India and inspired her to tell her own stories. In Heaven on Earth, her favorite film of her entire repertoire, she told the story of Chand, a young Punjabi woman who leaves India for Canada to marry a man she has never met. Chand faces abuse from her husband, his family, and society. It's a story, too, about isolation. In Funny Boy, Deepa explores the coming of age of a young gay man in Sri Lanka. Again, the film deals with conflict, that of being gay in a country that does not accept homosexual behavior, and just as his country is about to be enveloped in a civil war. Part of Deepa's success can be attributed to her process. She writes her scripts in longhand. Her storytelling is so, so personal. The other part is how she works with actors. She workshops her films, spending as much as a couple of days with the cast so that they understand their characters where they came from, and how they got to where they are in the film. Tonight, Deepa is accepting her award from Los Angeles, where she's currently on set of Little America. It was written and is being produced by the Oscar winner for CODA, Sean Heater. Please join me in honoring filmmaker and storyteller, Deepa Mehta. Namaskar. Thank you so much for this recognition. I am deeply indebted to the Public Policy Forum and you, Ed, for giving me this honor and being among such exalted company. Uh, this is a fan moment, and I'd like to call out to Mark McKinnon, who I admire deeply, and whose work comes from the heart and, and a conscience that one cannot be amazed by. Thank you so much for having me amongst you. I wish I was there. Uh, as you can see, I'm on set in in Los Angeles on a project called Little America. And one of the reasons I love it is, is because it's written by the amazing Sean Hader, who is the writer and the producer of, um, of, this, uh, of this series. And uh, she is amazing. If any of you haven't seen Coda, see it. See, there's so many fan moments that I'm taking advantage of. But perhaps what I really want to talk briefly about is something that I carry with me wherever I go, is my search for home. What is home? And for a long time, I equated home with safety. And uh, I come from India. I was born and brought up there. And I did most of my films in India and then migrated to Canada. Uh, and it took, actually, for our film Water, which was shot in Delhi, in, in, in uh, New Delhi and Varanasi, to be trashed by the government that was present, who claimed that, um, that the film was anti-Hinduism and widows in India who were treated really badly was just 
uh, was just something that I had made up to appease the West. Um, they trashed our sets, my effigies got burned, it was very dramatic. David Hamilton, the producer, uh, and I got death threats, and my family in India was very deeply distraught. Uh, I remember sitting, um, and the film was shut down, I remember sitting on a plane on my way to uh, Delhi, uh, from, uh, on my way to Toronto from Delhi, and putting on the safety belt, and I thought for the first time in my life, even though I'd been a Canadian citizen for 15 years, for the first time in my life, I felt I was going home. And it suddenly hit me that I equated home with safety. And, um, and it is, Canada has been my safe home. And if India continues to give me her stories, to which I'm very grateful, Canada always gives me the freedom to express those stories. So safety has become, I think, something that inspires my work. And it's deeply tied with politics. Where is home? Is it where you're physically safe or where your imagination has a free reign? What is home? Where your family is around you or you're like the many refugees in Afghan from Afghanistan or you're desperately living in Ukraine and trying to find a place that, that can enable you to stay where you are and feel safe? Or, you, or, is it, or is it Sri Lanka, which is again at this moment fighting where its citizens, and including my cast and crew of Funny Boy, are fighting for, for freedom from a dictatorial Rajapaksa government. Uh, Funny Boy was, was an amazing film to make because it's based on um, a Canadian book by Sham Selvadurai, and it's about the importance of freedom. It's the importance of how human beings, if they can be anything in their lives, should be without prejudice. If, if anybody says, what's your goal in life? I mean, I, I think it's a pretty tough one, but through my work, um, I'd like to actually do things or make films that are anti-prejudice. It's a tough call, but hey, maybe we can all do it together because I sure can't do it alone. So. I'd like to thank you so much um, to listening to me for this award, to my cast and crew who have risked their reputation for David Hamilton for always being there, and, for, and to Canada and to India, uh, because without both these countries, I feel I would not be whole. Um, have a great evening, and I think I'd better go back to set. Thank you. Yeah.